see you guys in the dark. Each year, me and one of my closest friends, we'll call him Dane, would go down to go visit his grandparents at their cabin in a nice, small, peaceful town in North Georgia mountains. Me, my friend, and his grandfather are all outdoors kind of people, so we are always looking for something fun for all of us to do around the area. One night we decided to go on a night hike on a trail not too far from the cabin. Now this isn't the kind of trail you're probably thinking of. It really is a gravel dirt road, but a lot of hunters, campers, motorbikers, and backpackers use it. We headed out to the trail, and right as we pulled up to the trail, we were going to hike on, we noticed that an older, beat-up, suspicious-looking black Chevy SUV, with two middle-aged men in it parked next to the entrance of the trail. Now, even though this is a safe area, drug deals and other kinds of sketchy activity can occur deep in these woods, so we avoided going on that trail and decided to head down to another trail about half a mile down the road. We pulled about 50 or so feet into the trail, just outside of view from the road, parked the truck, got out, and started our hike. Our hike was off to a great start, until we got about a mile in. We started to hear a dog bark from probably about 300 feet away. We decided to keep going, but the dog just would not stop barking, and we didn't know if the dog was on a leash or not and would come attack us, so we decided to turn around and head back. When we were about, let's say, a thousand or so feet away from the truck, we could see a car sitting behind my friend's grandfather's truck, running with its headlights on. This instantly made us worry, because he would roll up behind a random truck at ten at night on an isolated trail. And keep in mind, you would have to drive into the trail to see that we parked the truck. It was not visible from the road at all. We stood there for about five minutes, trying to see if we could see anybody. But since it was so dark, and pretty far away, it was hard to see anything. Fortunately for us, there was a pretty large tree next to the trail that we were able to stand behind, so that there was no way that they could see us from where they were parked. My friend's grandfather took these night vision binoculars that we had with us to try and get a better look. But it was still not much help. We decided to just stand there and wait for them to turn around and leave because there was no chance that we were going to walk back with this random car with a potential bad person in it sitting behind our truck. After about 10 minutes of us standing there, to my absolute horror, the car drives around the truck and then starts to head down the trail in our direction. As fast as we could, we climbed up this hill right next to us and then hid behind a log that was sitting on the top. A few seconds later, the same beat-up black Chevy SUV we saw outside the other trail we were originally supposed to hike on comes driving down where we were just standing not even 15 seconds ago. The car had its windows rolled down and started to slow down as it drove past us. Me, my friend, and his grandpa were terrified. Our hearts were pounding out of our chests, and we were scared that these guys would stop and sit there or even worse, get out and start looking for us. Fortunately, the car just kept driving, and it never stopped. As soon as the car was out of sight, we got out of our hiding spot, booked it back to the truck, and then got the hell out of there. I know this may not be as scary as some others, but to us, it was definitely pretty frightening. We don't know who or what those guys wanted. My guess is they had a stash on that trail deeper into the woods and thought that we stumbled upon it, or something, and they were out to confront us, or even worse. A lot of things could have gone wrong. We could have walked up to the truck just as they pulled in, and what if they came out and then looked for us? What if they had slashed the tires of the truck? Or what if they turned their headlights off and sat there and waited for us to come back? My friend and his grandfather actually went back in the daytime a few days later to the exact spot where we were hiding, and then took some pictures. The first picture is where we were standing, looking at the truck and the car behind it. Off in the distance, you could see our truck parked. That's exactly where we had it parked that same night, just off to the left in the hill. We rushed up to the hide from the car. In the second picture, you could see where our hiding spot was. After my friend and his grandfather went back, 
They said that they were very lucky to have made it there successfully, as it seemed impossible to do it as fast as we did, especially with all the shrubs and thorns in the way. If we had just gotten there, even two seconds later, we could have been seen. I can only imagine what would have happened if we didn't make it up that hill, and those guys actually saw us. I'm a 30-year-old, slightly disabled woman with clinical depression. I used to live with my mom and brother in another state, but me and my dad had moved to the state that my aunt, his sister, lives in 10 years ago. My mom is an addict who was hit rock bottom due to our leave. Her addiction was first drug-related, but she switched to gambling when I was a teen. Her addictions involved stealing from her job and her sister's dying husband because she couldn't deal with the withdrawal. Eventually, she was forced by her job to detox, and afterwards she switched to gambling. She stole money from my dad, and he had to find ways to pay the bills for us. She would also ask for money from friends to hide her gambling on paydays. When I graduated from high school, I had enough. I was afraid that we would eventually be homeless, so I asked to stay with my dad's sister, and she let me live with her. My dad, angry with my mother, followed me as my brother had stayed behind to watch over our mom. When I came to live with my aunt, I got diagnosed with clinical depression and anemia. My dad spent the next nine years trying to convince me that I was mad at my mom, when in fact it was my anemia and depression towards my family breaking apart. He tried really hard to say that it all stemmed from her. He even said that I should get therapy because of her. He tried to make me think that I was angry like he was at her. I never was. I forgave her before we even left her side. I had to leave for my own sanity. He was driving me crazy with his constant shaming of her addiction sickness. Fast forward ten years later. He meets a new girlfriend at his job. She's a year younger than me. I didn't mind. I even supported them because they seemed happy. Little did I know how evil this woman is. At first, I became a friend to her, and she invited me to go eat out with them and go on a vacation with them. It was cool. Until I caught her moaning when her own little kids were right across the hall. Looking out for her and my dad, I let them know. She proceeded that day. I told them about how loud they were to tell me to get out of her car. She was supposed to buy me shoes as a gift. Then, after I told my dad, she didn't want me to go. She lied to our faces about it, saying that she told me to get in the front seat. Some months later, since my dad decided to ignore her lie and keep dating her like nothing had happened, she lied once again in a text message about her son. I won't go into any details, but I just know that I snapped a shot of our old conversation about him that proved that she was lying. She stopped talking to me right after, and even called my dad and told him not to read the text or listen to me about it. I, of course, showed it to him. He, to this day, ignores the fact that she lied twice, even with one text proof. Some months after this insane incident, he went on a vacation with only her. He brought her back to his sister's house, after saying that he would keep us apart. And I, in a rage of sadness, went outside to go calm down. I almost slept out there at night. I told him that I was going to sleep outside in the backyard on a chair with a blanket and pillow because I was so disgusted. After I had calmed down, fighting thoughts of running away, I went inside of the house to go to sleep in my own room. I caught the two psychos making out. I was angry. I banged on the door. Dad got mad at me and then put his hands on my neck. No pressure at all. Basically told me to shut the fuck up or get out. I can't even go to a violent shelter since I never called the police. To this day, I do hate him. He, as of now, wants me to listen to her lies about what has happened that day in her car. I don't want to put up with either of those psychos. When I can, I will move out. This woman is a psycho who literally gets mad if he takes me to an appointment instead of seeing her. One time, she even got jealous because he watched TV with me instead of being with her. She at least admitted that it was nonsensical. She used to call him hour after hour, every single day. Now it's three at set times to the point that he predicts when it's her. She will text him over and over, every day. 
I've caught her petting him when he was asleep on her couch. Petting this woman is crazy, and my dad is too. He denies obvious text proof, and even her behavior is sketchy. He might have a crazy stabbing freak for a girlfriend, and he doesn't even know it. I'm going back to my mom's when I can. She's not as crazy as this lady is. I don't feel safe when my dad allows this insanity near me. He's lost his mind. I'm doing well for a first-time worker in fast food. I have impressed myself and everyone around me. Soon I will be free of all of this. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night. And I'll see you next time.